CES, formerly known as the Consumer Electronics Show, is in the books. This year it was a mix of in-person tech reveals in Vegas and some online presentations. Ian Schur from CNET joins me now. Ian, some cool cars, high-tech masks, flashy TVs, a lot to talk about. First, the yeah. format was a little different this year. It was sort of a hybrid show. Do you think it worked well that way? It was definitely better than the year before, that's for sure. You know, they, they, this has always been an in-person event, and it is one of the largest trade shows in the world. And part of that is that we're talking about bringing together somewhere north of 150,000 people from around the world, more than 2,000 companies together in Las Vegas. And so it's always been kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of stuff. But that's part of the fun part to me. And unfortunately, it doesn't translate that well to the digital world. So amidst the pandemic, they tried to do an all virtual one last year. It, it was a little rough, right? It didn't have as much hype to it. There was definitely the translation of new technology didn't help as well. So this year, especially because of Omicron, uh, they tried to do a hybrid model and it, it worked better, that's for sure. And especially the people who were able to actually be there who I interviewed for a few stories at CNET, seem to really like kind of, you know, especially having a year off, having that opportunity to touch and feel the actual technology that's there. Yeah, because that really does make a difference. What do you think, Ian, were some of the coolest concepts out there? I mean, the thing that really blew me away were, there was, there was one thing that I, I think everyone was talking about, which was this color changing car from BMW. It, what it did is that they partnered with the people who make e-ink displays. This is the stuff that's on a Kindle reader, right? That, that a lot of Amazon readers have. And what it does in this case is that they created these panels on the car. They didn't just stick a bunch of Kindles on it and call it A. And what they did is that they made it so that it will actually change all sorts of different colors. And by colors, I mean black to gray to white, not red or blue or green. And it's actually really cool. We have pictures and video of it on CNET. You can put a racing stripe on it if you're feeling really adventurous and all sorts of other stuff. And it just kind of, it made it feel very different. And for some reason that, that really stood out. The other thing that really was interesting to me was this new TV technology. Every year there's a new te technology in the TV world. And this year it was called QD OLED. That's a lot of letters all smushed together. But the essential of it is that it's supposed to offer much better color, much richer images, and much brighter, which is one of the big things. It's always been tough for TVs, especially in sunlight. So if they are able to pull that off, and so far our reviewers at CNET have not gotten to review them, but we have looked at it, it looks really incredible. And so this might be in the next four or five years, something that changes the way our normal everyday TVs are. That would be incredible to see, especially that car. I saw it on a, trending on Twitter, and it was really interesting to see it go from black to white. So could you imagine yeah. watching that while you're on the freeway? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was wondering, like, what are, I mean, this is all concept anyway, mm -hmm. right? But I've always wanted to be able to put a message on my car, like, sorry, if I accidentally <laughs> cut someone off or maybe like, be angry at them. Off. So that. <laughs> I like that though. It was that was a neat one to see, definitely. But it's it is always fun to see all these concepts. But what is actually going to make it onto the market? What can we really buy out of this? Yeah, I, a lot of the technology that we're going to actually be buying is uh, unfortunately a lot less interesting, but a lot more uh, usable. So uh, most notably are a lot of the laptops we saw. There were a lot of designs that are trying to be a lot slicker, a lot better. We saw a lot of chips that were announced by Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, right? All Silicon Valley uh, companies. They also are really kind of offering something that's much better. They're saying that they have much better battery life. They're saying that they have much better performance. So all that's great. That's wonderful to hear. And it means that the computers that we've all been struggling to get our hands on are getting better. So that's, that's nice. The other thing were a bunch of headsets, right? This is something that's very interesting. It, back in 2010, everyone from the tech industry showed off an iPad competitor, right? Dell, uh, Motorola, HP, you name them, they had a tablet. It was a big deal because that January of 2010 was when Apple was supposed to reveal its first iPad. Well, now Apple is expected to come out with a pair of glasses, right? Smart glasses or 
three uh, uh, virtual reality goggles. We don't know all the details, but whatever it is, all of the tech world is terrified and releasing a ton of their stuff as quickly as they can, even though they've been working for years on the stuff and spent billions of dollars in R&D. So we saw from TCL, which is a Chinese TV maker. We saw stuff from a bunch of other companies, Motorola and Microsoft announced a partnership. Uh, and so we're expecting to see many more of these devices over the next few months to try and get ahead of Apple. Even Sony, right, which is the big video game maker, they announced details about their PlayStation VR 2, which is a very hotly anticipated product and could be a real competitor, particularly on price, which is something everyone's uh, got a big question mark about. Huh, interesting. And you kind of touched on this, but moving into this year, into 2022, what are those top trends to look out for? I know you talked about uh, laptops, televisions, headsets. What are yeah. we looking at? No, the other thing that I would, I would keep my eye on is 5G. And for a lot of people, it's a little bit emotional because 5G has been somewhat of a letdown over the last couple of years, right? It was supposed to change the way we use the internet, change the way we use our phones. And really all it's been is slightly faster and really annoying marketing. And this year it is supposed to actually start coming through. And part of that is because Verizon and AT&T are actually turning on a new type of 5G called C-band. We explained it on CNET, but the bottom line being it's supposed to offer faster speeds and more distance, right? So you're actually able to have better signal over longer areas, which is something that's really kept 5G from being good so far. So we're excited about that. And a lot of the companies out there are saying that's going to start changing the game when it comes to tech. So we'll see. I, I've been promised that before, but that's one of the major trends. Okay. It is always we'll see. See what happens there. <laughs> so what was your favorite new invention to see? What would you buy out of this? Oh my gosh. You know, I think that the thing that really was uh, kind of cool was that I saw, you know, every year there are all these different robots that they show off at CES. You're never going to buy any of them. It's like 10 years away. But one of the interesting things they showed off this year, and we have video of it on CNET, is a robot that looks strikingly human. And every year I feel like they get more and more human looking, but they always still have that give that makes it clear they're a robot. Like this year, the one that they showed off was, you know, has gray skin. So most of us have <laughs> a different color from gray. And also the voice sounds very much like one of those voice assistants, right? It's, it's kind of stilted and not exactly uh, a normal sounding voice, but it is supposed to be able to be very interactive. It's, it's supposed to be able to be trained to do all sorts of uh, things to help you throughout your house. And again, it's pretty far away still, but I'm excited to see where that stuff goes because I have a feeling that with worker shortages and everything else, that's going to be part of what the life in the future is going to be. I'll keep the robots out of the workplace as long as they can come and clean my house and do the laundry, yes. then take all my money. <laughs> all right. Exactly. Ian Sherb from CNET, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me.